The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has confirmed that training for the newly created Special Weapons and Tactics Team, SWAT, will begin today. Adamu also listed the qualifications of officers to be trained in, in the new police tactical team to replace the disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. The IGP, in a statement signed by the Force Public Relations Officer, Frank Mba, insisted no ex-SARS operatives were shortlisted in the SWAT team. According to him, the officers selected for the training are young, smart, and energetic officers who have acquired not less than seven years' working experience with clean service records. Other criteria include no pending disciplinary matters, no record of violation of rights or for citizens or misuse of firearms, and also physically fit to withstand the rigor of SWAT training and operations. Joining us live is Tony Ofoyeton, a security consultant. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. How are you today? Fantastic. Uh, the SWAT training Hi. begins today, according to the IGP. What is your reaction uh, to what some people would call a prompt response by the police authority? Uh, well, um, yes, like every other average Nigerian, um, the uh, swift and fast uh, metamorphosis uh, calls for some level of concern and uh, suspicion. Um, I think that is one of the things that the police formation is um, uh, practically fighting against, as it were, uh, trying to convince the people now that uh, SAT is not SWAT. Uh, it's um, a very different um, ball game mentality. Uh, if you ask me, I would have um, expected that um, the police formation would have taken its time, a little more, uh, before bringing uh, SWAT, if they have to even bring in SWAT at all. Um, don't forget that uh, as we speak, if you look at the record of crime and criminality, you ask yourself statistically, is it increasing or is it at a normal rate or is it decreasing? Uh, what is the state of uh, Boko Haram attack and bombing during this era of SWAT and stars now? Has it increased? Um, so if, if the answer is in the negative, it simply means that if we do a vulnerability or risk analysis of um, all this uh, formation, it means that um, the formation itself has proven not to be as effective as we would have ordinarily expected. And uh, not to the extent that they are not working at all, uh, but to the extent that uh, if you do a, a juxtaposition with what is happening in the society, uh, what we expect the police to do is to first of all see how to pacify the people, see how to ensure that they are off the streets, see how to ensure that um, they are demand quickly met. They are talking about the release of all the detainees. I expected that that should be the first thing, even before the establishment of SWAT. The first thing should have been an executive order uh, from Mr. President ordering the IGP, or even the IGP himself, ordering all DPOs all over the country to ensure immediate release of all, unconditional release of all the detainees. But right. that was not done immediately. And of course, all of that, in talking about the compensation of um, the victims. Right, hold on, of hold on Mr. Foyeta. Um, so, so we don't go too deep into the um, request now, because I, I think that's where you're headed. I want us to focus strictly on SWAT and uh, their training. Um, what do you think might be necessary to ensure that these officers that um, are being uh, recruited into the SWAT team get the adequate training? And do you think we are even ready to train officers currently? Because there's other details that must come together to ensure an effective SWAT team. Well, if, if we go by the concept of SWAT, um, they are expected to handle specialized weapons. And uh, they are also expected to handle critical cases um, specialized weapon, the issue is whether the weapons that they are expected to handle are even available now. Uh, that is one. Then secondly, uh, this set of people we are talking about, uh, are they not going to be part of the Nigerian uh, police? Uh, the question will not be, um, if they start well, we I expect that SWAT may start well, if allowed to go, they will start well, operate within the confine of what they are asked to do for the next six months, most likely. But if the reality of um, the welfare of police is done on them, 
if the reality of uh, inadequate salary is done on them, if the reality of their future in the service is done on them, don't you think that they can use those same weapons to now see how they can secure their future for themselves and thereby becoming a worse terrorist uh, to the people? So I think that it's more or less placing the cat before the horse. If government is interested in SWAT, no problem about that. We're all interested in prevention of crime and criminality in the country. But to what extent can they convince themselves that SWAT will be better paid? SWAT will be better taken care of. SWAT will be better attended to. SWAT will have better equipment. SWAT will stay in better homes. SWAT children go to better schools. SWAT uh, pension will be well paid as at when due. So if the government is not able to convince itself, that will be an exercise in futility. And that is our fear. And that's what we're trying to actually make the government to understand that look. There are basic things that have to be the foundation before you talk about training of these people, before you talk okay. about deploying them and all those stuff like that. Right, and thank in you the, very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tony Foyeton, um, for speaking with us. Uh Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.